What a journey it's been the last few days. Since the day we left Panama on our way to St. Martin, so many issues have been revealed. Water soaked my bed. When you sail the open ocean, you know anything can happen. Even if the weather forecast shows a great window, this can turn and surprise you with much stronger winds and much bigger waves. Then there's the boat. Unexpected leaks, broken steering, broken autopilots. In addition, this time we have to face our beloved crew's seasickness. Puked on day one, puked on day two, puked even today. Not being able to do anything on the passage and having difficulties even keeping food and water in, we're forced to make a decision. So I'm uh, getting off in Santa Marta. Today is day three, actually. I didn't film it all yesterday because it was a horrible day. Uh, it's, there's not a really good way for me to start this back up, so I gotta explain to you what happened yesterday, and then I can explain to you what happened today. So yesterday, la the, the first full night had us going north and getting into the trade winds, and as we were going north, we had a really good sea state, and we were flying, we were doing like nine or 10 knots. The problem was, as soon as the morning kicked in, the sea state was huge. It was probably four meters, which is about 12 feet and it was just too much to try to beat against. So I decided to tack and go over towards Colombia, which was a great move because the, the sea stayed and the waves and the wind got even stronger after that, according to the forecasts. Fast forward to today, we've been going along this course for about, I don't know, 12 or four, uh, 13 hours, 14 hours. Uh, we're, we're right next to Colombia now, while well, we're about 50 miles off the coast and we're motoring up the coast uh, because the trade winds, they come around the mainland of Colombia and they wrap around it and start going to the, from the north to the south. So we're basically motoring right into the wind and uh, we've got a fishing line out and we've been motoring for probably three hours, three and a half hours and we've made really good time. We're making seven knots against the wind, which is really nice. It's nice to have a big boat. It's not very comfortable. The crew's not feeling too good. Anna's sick. Steph is sick. Joe? I'm all right, I feel great. Joe feels great. Nothing to complain about that. I mean, it started off, I was a little rough. Going down to the cabin when we first started going, I was getting a little sick. But like being out here now, especially when the sea states calmed down a lot, I'm feeling all right, I'm feeling pretty good. So, yeah. What about you? This is my happy face at the moment. <laughs> it's not a happy face at all. <laughs> Tell us how your sail has been so far. Oh, just amazing. Puked on day one, puked on day two, puked even today after the mango. Ah, oh, you puked up the mango. Yeah, the mango. Waste of mango. Yeah, waste of pineapple, waste of mango, waste, waste of food. So now I'm just drinking water and uh, eating crackers. Which is uh, nice for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, I made soup. I did make soup. You can try some of that. Maybe it'll be good for you, maybe not. Oh, I did laundry today. Well, doing laundry was more like rinsing everything off and, and wringing it out and then hanging it up. But uh, I fixed this hatch. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. We had so many leaks on the boat the first night that I just, it was it was hard to keep up with. But I've, I've fixed, I've fixed, <laughs> I lost my mind. Yeah, he did, he went crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I was pissed because I just spent the better part of a year trying to get this boat water tight. But this hatch leaked, the one that's open there. And I've, I, re I realized what I did was when I re-bedded it, like last week, I, I, um, as I was taking the adhesive off of it, one little line of adhesive went over the hatch seal that I didn't see. And it, that was causing water to come in. And a lot of water! So I'm hoping that taking that off and cleaning that up um, stops the water ingress there because my entire bed was soaked, which is the reason I did laundry today. Access to hatch was leaking really bad, so I had to rebed that again for the third time, actually. That's this. You can see how it's kind of ghetto looking right now. And it's just like adhesive everywhere. When I bought the boat, I did that in Butyl. And then I realized it was leaking and I did it in 5200. And then it was leaking again, so I put a shitload of 5200 on it. And now it's the third time it's finally done. <laughs> it's not leaking anymore but because we're taking big waves and the waves are, are hitting the front of the boat and coming down this channel 
and then coming over here and coming down, 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 and just washing over the back of the boat. Like all this water is coming this way, all this water is com coming this way, it's coming over this hatch and this, and then overall the new teak. The only thing that's not fixed right now is the front window. I didn't get a chance to fix that before we left, but that's got some silicone on it and it's not leaking. I had to repair the bilge pump. I had to repair, uh, mostly leaking. I had, to, I had to rebuild one of the winches. But now I'm ready to go and I'm ready for the stronger trades that we were in yesterday morning. Uh, now that I'm motoring up the coast, we're gonna end up hitting those and kind of eating it in the face. But this time it's not gonna be so um, it's hard and heavy because now they've diminished a little bit. A couple of days ago, they were about 28 to 30 knots, and when we get to them, they'll be 23 to 25 knots, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. Uh, it's a big difference. I'll show you downstairs on the weather routing as soon as I get the motor stopped, probably tomorrow. But in order to understand what's going on in this video series, you're gonna have to know a little bit about the weather routing and how I navigate with that. Alright, I'm briefly going to stop the video and just explain to you guys how I weather route. So there's two main programs that I use to weather route, Windy and Predict Wind. Windy is a free version, it's, it's easy, it's cheap, it's, it's, the user interface is fairly straightforward, and most of all, you can get it anywhere, you can get it on your phone, it's really, really easy. So this is Windy, basically you just search your location, we put in Santa Marta, because that's where we're at right now, and it will give you a forecast up to, den, up to 10 days out. User interface is fairly straightforward, and it is a little bit choppy when it's going through, it's not, it doesn't have a really smooth scrolling, but you get three different models and you can get the information that you need very, very quickly and very free, which is nice. The models include ECMWF, which is the European Center for Mid-Range Weather Forecasting, the GFS, which is the Global Forecasting System, and ICON, which is a Germany-based weather forecasting system. Uh, you can switch between the three and scroll through. Now, if you'd like a little more pro version of this, you can sign up to Predict Wind. You have to pay, and I think it's yearly. I think I pay like 100 bucks yearly or something like that, but it's worth it. And if you're planning on going offshore and having any kind of Iridium device that you need to download this, you're going to need this subscription anyway. So it might be a good idea. And let me just show you how it works really quick. So this is the desktop version of Predict Wind. If you use the Iridium version of Predict Wind, you won't get a split screen, and you'll have to select where you're actually going to download the grib files from. But PredictWind has a really cool user interface because it's super smooth. When you push play, it very smoothly transitions and gives you a really good overview of how the wind is going to act for the next few weeks. So basically what I'm looking at is uh, the I'm going to use the European model and the GFS model. There's a couple other ones that PredictWind uses. PredictWind has its own algorithm and PWG is the PredictWind GFS and then PWE is the PredictWind ECMWF. Uh, Spire is a satellite-based system. It's pretty cool. Uh, you should if you don't know what it is, just go ahead and look look it up. Uh, I think they have like 80 satellites and and um, it's they're supposed to, supposedly number two in accuracy behind ECMWF. And then UCMO is a UK-based weather routing. I'm just going to use the European and the American model, the ECMWF and the GFS, and we're just going to compare them. I'll slide through and I'll see if anything kind of pops out, right? This is like an overview, like, oh, okay, I need to make a passage. What's the wind going to be doing for the next 10 days? Looks pretty steady. Looks like it's going to get a little more powerful on Monday, Tuesday. Both of these models are matching. If you can, if you're on your desktop and you're and you you have internet, uh, it's good to look at all of them before you leave. So if you're going to go for a longer passage or you really want to understand how all this weather works together, you're going to have to zoom out. And that's the most important thing. You need to have a macro view on how the weather works in the Atlantic or in the Pacific or in the area that you're at. So we're just going to zoom out to until uh, we can see most of the Atlantic. And you see that right now, this is today, there's two systems. 
One is right under Greenland, and one is off the coast of the states in, in the east coast. So as we scroll forward, you'll see the systems merge. Now it's one big system right in the center of the North Atlantic. And this system, everywhere around it, there's no wind at all. Uh, these big storm systems, they suck up all the energy. And then there's not a lot of trade wind action going into the Caribbean. So while that storm is going across the Atlantic, it's sucking up all of the energy for hundreds and hundreds of miles, and you're not going to get the good, solid trade winds in the Caribbean that you're used to. Now, as soon as this thing leaves, watch. There's Sunday, Monday. Remember Monday and Tuesday? It was going to get a little stronger. That's right when that storm dissipates and another storm is, is being created over by the eastern seaboard of the United States. And now we're seeing red down in the Caribbean. And that's how it works. That's how it works in the Pacific too. They roll up on the North 40 and then they feed the trades coming into the Pacific. So my suggestion to you is zoom out, watch the trades for a little while and see what's going on. And the more you watch, the more you'll, you'll see these patterns and you'll understand what's going on. All right, that'll do it for this week. I hope you learned something. Tune in next week when we arrive to Santa Marta for some fun and we get to see what happens on the rest of this crazy adventure. So before I go, I just wanted to tell you guys that there's a lot that goes into making these videos. And the only way I'm able to keep making them is with the help of people just like you. For as little as $1 a month, you can go on to patreon.com slash svzingaro and become a member of our crew and help make these videos possible. Please go check it out, sign up, and much love to all my current patrons and all the future ones. Peace, love. Peace.